What's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday, May 8th, and if you listen to me about George Springer in the Spotlight Hitters, I look smart. If you look, listen to me about Andrew McCutcheon in the Spotlight Hitters, I didn't. So skip that part of yesterday's article. Um, that's all I've got about me. What about you, Jake? How did you end up yesterday? I was okay. Um, the Nats stack came through at the end. Matt Adams, double dong. Trey Turner homered. Um, actually, the two guys I was really like excited to play, well, Turner, Turner Dong, so he was fine. Um, but Harper and Michael Taylor didn't really do anything. So could have been much bigger, but, I mean, you can say that about pretty much any lineup. Um, Gant was fine, and then Strasburg was good, I think. Didn't he lead the, the slate in pitching? Uh, um, like total points? Yeah. Probably. Uh, I know yeah. that Hendricks was the guy that was at like the top of FanDuel um, tourneys. Yeah, so Strasburg was fine if you played Gant. Um, uh, yeah, it was a pretty good slate overall. I mean, it looked pretty ugly, but made some money on it, so that's all that matters. Yeah, let me pull up the pictures. I just wanted to see how everybody shook out. I didn't really look at like the... Oh no, uh, Romero Eflin. led the slate. A couple he, people beat Strasburg, actually. Yeah. Eflin, Eflin Romero, Keiko, Hendricks. But like the big guns. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, they were all fine from what it looks like, uh, except for Samarja. So. Yeah, I'm, Samarja didn't go well. Yeah. <laughs> what's, the, what's the write up here? Oh, that's the nice way to put it. Jeff Samarja surrendered five runs in four innings Monday. Oh, uh, this is going to be totally random, but I think it's kind of relevant to this. Um, I was trying to set up uh, my Google Chrome search bar so that I could search for Fangrass players like immediately instead of having to go to Fangrass first. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see if there was an extension for Chrome. There is, but it's more for like linking players' names. It's called Fangrass Search. And I went and looked at the reviews, and there were two. <clears throat> One of them was from a gentleman named Joe Stone, who wrote, It works so good for finding baseball polyer. If only it could fix my marriage. <laughs> oh my goodness. It seems like <laughs> Joe's got some other problems to worry about so, than fan graphs. Yeah. So apparently uh, this fan graph search is a decent extension, but will not save your marriage if it's uh, going down the tubes. Just wanted to let everybody know in case they were... Uh, trying to balance both things at once. I got nothing. It, just, it was so ridiculous to me. Let's get started because I got nothing left after that one. <laughs> Orioles and Royals. Orioles, 4.6 run implied total. Royals, 3.9. Uh, it's a 58% chance to win for the Orioles. Dylan Bundy going for Baltimore. Danny Duffy uh, going for Kansas City. Um... Not really a spot where I'm looking at either guy on FanDuel. There's just too many other pitching options. And uh, I think Bundy could be okay on DK. I can't imagine wanting to go all the way down to Duffy, though. Uh, are you looking at either of these guys? Yeah, Bundy. So, um, Bundy, he's been really good outside of the last couple starts. So, for most of the season. Um, and I'm not really worried about him. He had a big swinging strike rate in his last start, even though he... He didn't have that great of an outing. Um, now he'll get the Royals, of course, and they don't strike out that much. But Bundy's strikeout stuff, especially against righties, he's up to like almost 35% against right-handed bats this year. Just got great stuff against righties. Um, he does struggle with lefties, so you're worried about Moustakis and, and Duda. But like going through this lineup, I'm not really scared about Whit Merrifield versus a righty. Not scared of uh, Solaire. He's gonna wave and miss quite a bit. Um, Cuthbert from the right side. I'll see these Escobar. Probably not gonna strike him out, but shouldn't have too much trouble with him. Um, so I like Bundy a lot on DK for 7,800. Okay. He's one of those these few guys in this price range um, that I like a lot. So Bundy will definitely be a guy I consider tonight. Interesting. Yeah, he's he's pretty expensive on FanDuel. Uh, sixth most expensive pitcher going tonight. Uh, you know, I'd much rather spend an extra hundred dollars and grab Nola. Uh, I don't I don't see them as particularly close. At least on FanDuel, you know, Nola is what twenty 
three hundred dollars more yeah. expensive than him on DraftKings. Yeah. So to me, yeah, he's in. He's just in a weird spot on FanDuel for me to get there. And there's no chance of me ever taking someone like Danny Duffy when fourteen games are on the slate. Like I'm not. I'm not taking that big of an underdog that far down the salary table. It's just not worth it. Yeah, Duffy, and he doesn't even look that good. Like no. he's cheap, but um, the run total sort of says it all for me. For Baltimore, they're getting. Are they getting back scope tonight? Uh, tonight, he's he's in my expected lineup. Uh, I think he's listed as probable. Yeah, that's a big plus um, for me at least. And then they've got Trumbull back. Adam Jones is hitting better. Um, Mancini to lead it off. Then Manny Machado. This is going to be a much okay? tougher lineup. He was more uh, questionable. Yeah, he's he's questionable. Um, he got hit in the wrist Sunday. I think. Ooh, yeah, I don't like that. Um, so maybe not Jones. Then I, I don't merely mess with hand or wrist injuries when we're talking about hitters. Um, so maybe backing off Jones a little bit. Um, but I do like some of these Baltimore bats. Duffy just not good against righties. Four hundred woba, four eighty xfip, only inducing fourteen percent hard uh, soft contact versus right-handed hitters. Um, so my two favorites are Machado and Scope. But if you want to stack up the O's, I have no problem with going to Trumbo, Mancini, or um, uh, Valencia or someone like that. Yeah, uh, I'm with you. Uh, they didn't pop up a lot for me just because I think there are better stacks out there. Uh, so I don't. I would expect the Orioles to be relatively low owned. I think they're a nice, um, you know, contrarian stack. I mean, contrarian is probably not the right word, really. They're not on a 14 game slate. I don't see any issues with stacking them. You know, you get a lot of righty-lefty benefit. Uh, keep an eye on Adam Jones, because if he's not in the lineup, you know, there, we could see a little bit of tweaks there. But mm-hmm. guys like Trumbo or Machado, you know, they could have – they've got big-time power. So take a look there. Uh, as for the Royals, that's not – I'm not really looking at them. They didn't pop up for me at all, really. Uh, you can always take a look at, you know, Moose Tacos against a righty, but – or Duda even – uh, but I can't imagine having any part of the Royals at 3.9 run implied total. Yeah, no Royals for me. Uh, I do like Bundy a ton. If you wanted to play one bat, I think that Mustak is, is a pretty good play against Bundy. But since I'm considering Bundy and then only playing one lineup, I'm not going to end up with Mustak on my team. Yeah. Um, and then just going back to Bundy, he's had one of the best sliders in the entire MLB. He leads... The MLB and Wisp per swing at almost 60% on his slider, which is above Robbie Ray, Patrick Corbin, Max Scherzer, Cindergard, like all Chris Sale, like all these guys. Um, so if he's got that slider working against these righties, he's going to be unhittable. Um, he just hasn't had it work in the last two games, it looks like. Yeah. You know, for me, I just, I really won't be anywhere near this game with any sort of volume. There's too many other options. That's fair. It's not that exciting of a game, but no. I don't think we'll see a lot of ownership out of really anything here. No, you can you can have like four or five lines of Orioles if you max enter and be mm-hmm. right with the field and be yeah. fine. As, and you probably should. Here's one that people will probably not be talking about. Yankees and Red Sox. Yankees, five run implied total. Red Sox, 3.5. 65% chance to win for the Yanks. Uh, Luis Severino going for New York. Drew Pomeranz going for Boston. Um, I like Severino uh, a bit here. does make me a little nervous going against Boston, but 3.5 run implied total is crazy low for a team like the Sox. Uh, Pomeranz not a guy that's on my radar, but I'm going to end up with a decent amount of Severino. Um, I feel like you're going to tell me you don't like Severino, though. I mean, I can't really argue against Severino. Like he, what he's done is incredibly impressive this year. Like going back to last year, a complete game shutout against Houston. Um, before that, he had seven innings, eight Ks against the Angels. Um, the Red Sox have the highest WRC plus against right-handed pitching this year, but. Like matchups we've seen haven't really mattered that much for Severino. When he's on, he can pretty much dominate any lineup, and that includes the Red Sox. 
um, even though they're one of the best teams, if not the best, against right-handed pitching this year. Um, so I can't argue against Severino. I don't want to target against him because if he's got it working, he's going to be low-owned and could possibly throw another complete game shutout. It wouldn't be shocking at all. Uh, so, no, I, I don't disagree with you at all on Severino. It's a good price for him, too. You think he'll be low-owned? I think so. I think people will be scared off the Red Sox matchup. Yeah. You know, so, like, Aaron Nola's right there at 10-1. What's Severino on DK? 10-1. Or, I mean, FanDuel? 10-1. Yeah, okay, so he's 10,000 on DK. Yeah. Nola's 10-1 on DK. We got Paxson for 11K. There's going to be, like, Snell, 8,900. There's going to be other guys that people will probably play that have better matchups than Severino. Yeah, it's weird. Uh, Severino's the second most expensive pitcher on FanDuel, but I think I like him more on FanDuel. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, it's. I think you can play him on either side. He's Agreed. he's just it's so nasty when he's got his, his stuff working, and no one's gonna hit him if he does. That's just kind of how it's gonna go for him this year. It looks like. Yeah, I'm gonna end up with. I'll be heavier than the field on Severino, and uh, I'm I'm cool with that. But I'll certainly be nervous. Uh, I don't ever like running out guys against the Red Sox, just because there's too much talent there, but looks like tonight's going to be one of those nights. Um, yeah. you, we're both, we're in agreement, no Pomerans. Uh No Pomerans. Yeah. no. Okay. Uh, any one-off bats? I think Stanton. Yeah, so the, the three big guys, like, I can't really choose between them at any given moment, like Judge, Stanton, and Sanchez. Probably Sanchez for me, just because catcher is kind of weak okay. today at least on DK. So if you can afford to get up to Sanchez, I like that a lot on DK. Batting behind all these guys, he's probably going to have, well, unless they're hitting home runs, he's going to have some guys on base, I would think. Um, so I do like Sanchez a lot, and then you can make a case for either Stan or Judge. Uh, I don't have a clear lean there. Yeah, I prefer Stanton, uh, just because of the price. Yeah. Um, you know, $200 cheaper on FanDuel. He's $500 cheaper on DraftKings. Getting the matchup against the lefty, I'd, I'd prefer Stanton in that scenario. Not that it's it's not like a, a big gap or anything. If you want to judge, I'm perfectly fine with that. Uh, I don't really have any interest in any Red Sox bats. Neither do I. I'm completely off the Red Sox, just... Not messing around with targeting against Severino right now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's all Severino for me. He'll make up ninety nine percent of my Yankees ownership. I'll have yeah. probably Stanton in like a one or two lineup, one off, but that's probably about it. Alrighty, Phillies and Giants. Stupid Phillies. Phillies four point seven run implied total. Giants three point three. 65% chance to win for Philadelphia. Aaron Nola uh, going for the Phillies. Derek Holland going for the Giants. Uh, don't touch Holland at all. Uh, Nola, one of my favorite plays on FanDuel. Fifth most expensive pitcher. Only 9,000. Uh, really nice matchup. Giants implied total 3.3 is tied for the lowest on the slate. Could be the absolute lowest when the Cubs and Marlins line actually comes out. Uh, Nola will probably be the guy that I have the most of on FanDuel, and uh, I would have a real decent amount of him on DraftKings, too. Uh, where do you stand on Nola? Yeah, that's he's kind of going to be the guy, I think, that gets people off of Severino. He's right next to him. Uh, better matchup against the Giants, who are an average, maybe a little bit above average matchup for right-handed pitching. Um, and Nola's been really good, especially his last couple starts in terms of missing bats. Um, so I like to see that. I wasn't super high on him because he had the swinging strike rate below 10 for quite a few starts in a row. And he was up to 13.9 last start. Three starts ago was at 17.5, uh, 9.9 mixed in there. So those are things I like to see from Nola, especially when you're paying up for him like this. Uh, he's a big favorite and... I say it all the time, but the Giants' bats you're really scared of are from the right side. So right-handed pitching, I love targeting against the Giants. There you go. 
Um, yeah, I love the Phillies, too. Uh, they came up as one of my main stacks. On FanDuel, they have I have the third most ownership of the Phillies from a team perspective. So they're going to be somebody that pops up a lot for me. Uh, hoping they can continue uh, from yesterday where uh, I did not have as much Phillies as I would have liked. So lovely, lovely to be on them the next day. Uh, I'll go pretty much anybody in the Phillies lineup. Uh, Hernandez, Reese Hoskins looks amazing today. Uh, I really can't have enough of him. He'll be one of my higher-owned hitters. Uh, Althair looks good. Carlos Santana looks good. Um, you know, Odebel Herrera coming off the, the double dong from yesterday. Uh, Phillies are a, a nice stack to me. I'll go all the way down to, to six. Um, and I don't really have much of a problem if you want to go to Kingery, uh, particularly on... Well, either site, really. 2200 for a shortstop on FanDuel is nice. 3200 for a shortstop third base dual eligibility guy. That's fine by me. Uh, so 1 to 7, honestly, would be would be more than okay for me from the Phillies. Yeah, I'm, I'm all over the Phillies, too. So I, I said Phillies onslaught on the, the Night Shift podcast because uh, I like Nola, and I think Nola gets a bunch of run support here. Holland is in the top 10 in average exit velocity against righties this year, 92.7 miles per hour. It's a completely different story against lefties, so I'm not going with Herrera here. But outside of him, I think one through seven, you said it. Uh, Althair and Reese Hoskins are my two favorites, but Cesar Hernandez has been hitting the ball a lot harder this year. So I'm not sure what's going on with him, but he is, like, can't argue with the numbers here. Like, hard contact is up and uh he looks pretty good so 3700 for cesar hernandez against the lefty um sign me up for some of that Mm -hmm. um you have to love hoskins right yeah oh he's got to be top three or four play on the slate i think okay um yeah he like that's that's the obvious one he's 4900 i think he's like 500 dollars underpriced at least he's only four thousand on FanDuel, which is criminally low yeah i mean i would you rather have him over sixty three hundred dollar trout on DraftKings? is that how much he is like it's john gray yeah yeah of yeah. course i mean i get yeah. that it's in cores yeah but... so fourteen hundred dollar discount platoon advantage you're going up against a much worse pitcher yeah um the only thing trout has working for him there is is coors but is that really worth fourteen hundred dollars no i mean um, the not for me. I would say the platoon advantage for facing Holland is bigger than the advantage of Trout playing at cores as an individual. I, I can't really argue there. So, yeah, uh, Phillies look great tonight. Um, they're going to be. You think they'll be? They'll be pretty popular. Yeah, I mean, I don't think they're going to be over twelve, fifteen percent at most. Yeah, there's uh, too many other options. So. Yeah. Um, they do look really nice. They are uh, a priority of mine, that's for sure. Yeah, Hoskins could get to 15%, maybe 20%. Um, but I, outside of that, I don't think anybody's really over 10 on their team. Agreed. Uh, and then uh, Giants, no thank you. Ooh, no. None for me. This will be the day that Posey goes yard since I picked him for Diddy Dong yesterday. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how it works. Unless you're Chris. Yeah, unless you're Chris, and then you just get it right every day. Uh, yeah. For those that don't tune into the live show, uh, we pick a guy that we expect to hit a home run during every show, and uh, Chris basically gets it right every day. It's it's to the point where it's getting really weird now. He's called a lot of home runs. He called Conforto's home run, and he got that within like four minutes of the game starting. <laughs> yeah, DK and and Fanduel, wherever he plays, they're gonna start. Looking into him pretty soon if he doesn't stop this. Yeah, he's got some inside uh, he, he, info or he, something. Yeah, um, so he better he better calm it down with these home run calls. Uh, but if you follow them, like Dave, David Polka Polka from the White Sox, I can't I can't pronounce that. Yeah. Um, or is it Daniel? I can't I can never remember. Exactly. Like, he he's had that. some. Yeah, he's had some weird ones, and it's been like six in a row. Uh, so. I'll be on with Chris tonight, actually, so we will see if he can keep the streak alive. I'm sure he will, and he's going to pick someone weird. He's going to be like, 
Uh, I got Jorge Alfaro. Yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be like what? <laughs> Gone. Yeah. Tater in top of the second. <laughs> He's ridiculous. Bottom of the second, I guess. It's crazy. Yeah. So uh, roster a bunch of Phillies and roster Aaron Nola. That's the the summary for this game. Yeah, I like it. Blue Jays and Mariners. Uh, Blue Jays 3.9 run implied total. Mariners 4.2. It's a 54% chance to win for the Mariners. Marcus Stroman going for Toronto. Uh, James Paxton going for Seattle. Um, not really on either one of these guys. I'll have a little bit of Paxton, but he's nothing that I'm like really excited to have tonight. And I definitely don't want Stroman. Yeah, I, I mean, I like Paxton here. The only problem is that he's 11K on DraftKings. Um, I'm not really worried about the, the nine righties he's probably going to face because his K rate is even better against righties this year, 40% almost. Uh, he's sixth in whiffs per swing when I checked last night. Just He's got insanely good stuff. There's a lot of pitchers that I could see throwing seven, eight innings with 10Ks tonight, and Paxton's definitely one of them. I uh, just don't really like the price. I think I prefer McCullers over him if I have to choose in that price range. So I have no issue with Paxton. I don't want to target against him, but I don't think I'll end up on him. Um, what about Stroman? Not, I mean, I'm not playing Stroman, but sure. like he just looks – he's getting clubbed by lefties. Or, yeah, lefties. Um, so Cano and Seager, I talked about them a ton on the – Night shift, those are two of my favorite plays that I don't think are going to be very high owned. And Cano is only $3,700 on DK, which is just really, really underpriced for him. Uh, I literally, uh, in my first crunch of this, I literally have no Blue Jays or Mariners, whether pitching or hitting. Um, Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have a lot of this game. It's just those two guys that I like. Uh yeah, Cano for 3700 on DK looks pretty nice. Mm. Yeah, there's just there's nothing there's literally nothing here for me. I don't have anything interesting. This is just it, if this game fell off the slate, I wouldn't even notice. Yeah, I mean, you kind of have to pick a couple games to not have a lot of exposure to even when you're when you're max entering. And this would probably be one where I'm just cherry picking one or two hitters and crossing the game off outside of that. Yeah, I'm anxious to see what our uh, projected ownership is for Paxton on FanDuel, because I assume it's going to be relatively low. Um, And, like, I like him from an upside perspective. Mm -hmm. If you told me that he had the highest score for the day as as a pitcher, that wouldn't shock me. I mean, he's got big-time K stuff, so it might be worth it for me to force in, you know, 3 or 4% just to make sure um, I'm not left out in the cold, because... He is the type of guy that can have a big day. And that's yeah. not the kind of guy I want to fade. Like, it's one thing if I say, you know, I don't really need any, I don't know, I don't have a good example for today. Because <laughs> um, there's a lot of, like, high K pitchers. But, you know, if he's a guy that's just more, like a Dallas Keuchel yesterday or something, you, know, you can end up with none of him, and that's really easy. But, I mean, Paxton can K-12 Blue Jays tonight, and I, it wouldn't shock me in the least. Yeah. I'm, I completely agree. All right, that's it. That's enough for this game. Sorry, Blue Jays and uh, Mariners, but nobody cares. Rays and Braves. Ugh. <sighs> Rays, 3.9 run implied total. Braves, 3.4. 56% chance to win uh, for Tampa. Blake Snell going for the Rays. Sean Newcomb going for the Braves. Um, I like Snell here. I wish I didn't. But I kind of do. I'll have a little bit of him. I think I have 6% of him right now. Uh, Just in a decent spot. In a better world, or like in a different world, I would like Newcomb as well. But they're just too big of an underdog. Um, 3.4 run implied total is brutally bad for the Braves. Uh, So I'll have some Snell. I, I think Snell works as like an okay option on DK as well. What are you thinking about these guys? Yeah, Vegas showing a lot of respect for Snell. Uh, this Braves offense against lefties looks really, really good. And um, now you add in Jose Bautista, like whatever you think of him, if you think he's done or whatever, he's still going to be able to hit lefties. Yeah. 
Um, you've got Acuna in there, Ozzy Albies, Freddie Freeman can hit lefties, Kurt Suzuki just smokes lefties, uh, Camargo can hit lefties. Uh, so I'm worried about Snell. I'm not playing Snell here. Okay. Um, but that that's a lot of respect for Vegas with the Braves only having a 3.5 run total. I think this is got to be one of the better offenses in all the MLB against left-handed pitching. Um, just going going down the lineup. Um, so I'm not really on anything in this game, actually. I respect Snell. I don't think he's going to blow up here. Um, I don't want to play the Braves against him. Mm-hmm. And then Newcomb, I just don't think it's the slate for him at this price, 8500 I do like him as a pitcher as well. And I don't really want to target against him either. Um, so I'm just hoping this one stays pretty quiet. I mean, I hope the Braves blow up, but that has nothing to do with the daily fantasy. Yeah. Um, Braves, lowest strikeout rate in baseball versus lefties this year. Yeah, they... Well, like, Suzuki never strikes out. Uh, Acuna, I don't know if he's going to strike out a ton. Albies isn't going to... Um, they just have a lot of good hitters. Marquecas doesn't K. Yeah, even against lefties. I don't think Marquecas K is that much. Um... Yeah, I mean, this is just a game where I'll have a little bit of Snell, and that's it. Uh, just because I really like the price and the the win percentage on FanDuel. And he's a guy that, you know, can K a bunch of guys. I know the Braves aren't mm-hmm. necessarily that matchup, but there's a world where Snell is is on and has that sort of stuff. Uh, so I'll probably be in, like, the 5 to 7 or 8% range on Snell. And that's it. I won't have any bats in this game. That's fair. Yeah. Uh, if Snell's got his stuff working, he's another one of those guys that could just mow down a lineup. I think right. his his stuff is that good, at least it has been this year, and he hasn't really had his his classic Blake Snell blow-ups. So I'm not expecting it here or really in the near future if he continues to look like this. I'm with you. Reds and Mets. This one's going to be weird. Uh, Reds, 5-run implied total. Mets, 4.2. 58% chance to win for the Reds. Uh, Luis Castillo going for Cincinnati. Jason Vargas going for New York. Um, not playing Vargas, clearly. But I like Luis Castillo here, either as a, a cheap option pitcher on FanDuel or a number two on DraftKings. Um you know, four point two run implied total isn't the like the best scenario for Castillo, but I think he's just got at least on FanDuel where he's the twenty second most expensive pitcher. Um, he's just priced too low. He, like if he were more at like sixty eight hundred, sixty nine hundred, uh, it would look a little bit more reasonable. But he's just underpriced on FanDuel for such a such a big favorite. Um, are you looking at Castillo? Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna get sucked back into him. Uh, <laughs> like he, he did the thing that you want him to do last start. He was cheap and he got a bunch of strikeouts, gave up a couple runs, but uh, went deep enough. And I'm never expecting him to throw a shutout. He's probably gonna give up a home run and look bad for an inning or two. But if he can just get six, seven, eight strikeouts, like this is way too cheap for him. In general, I don't think the Mets lineup is something special. Conforto hit a home run last night because Chris called it, but uh, <laughs> they're not all that scary. Um, outside of the first three, uh, Conforto, well, the first three lefties. Cespedes has not been great. Um, but like Todd Frazier, Lobaton, Ahmed Rosario is a strikeout. Um, you know, it, Castillo is just so talented. And this is like a, an average matchup for him, and he's 6,600. Uh, if he was 8K, I wouldn't even want to play him here, but it's so, so cheap that you can get up to some Coors guys, or you can get up to some of these top stacks that we're going to talk about, or uh, like a Gary Sanchez or Aaron Judge. Like, he just allows you to do so much, and a 20% swinging strike rate almost in his last start. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm getting sucked back in. Yeah, it's his price is so weird on Fandle. He's nine hundred dollars cheaper than Derek Holland. Like, yeah, 
I can't even imagine going to Holland if you knew that you could pay nine hundred dollars less for Castillo. Um, I'm gonna have a decent amount of Castillo. I think I have him in five percent of my lines right now, which is relatively high for a guy at his price point. Um, it's not gonna take much to be above the field on a day like today when you've got Kluber, Severino, Paxton, McCullers, Nola, like all these guys at the top of the heap. Um, so it won't take much to get over the field on some flyer guys like Castillo. And the spot looks great. Um, I do like the red stack uh, a decent amount. They'll probably be like my fifth or sixth most uh, stack team. It's more of a price thing than anything else. But like Peraza, Eugenio Suarez, Duvall, these are all guys that I'm taking a look at. Duvall with a pretty nice chance to dong again here. Mm-hmm. Uh, 2900 on FanDuel, bargain price in my opinion. Yeah, I like a bunch of these Reds too, and and that's also why I like Castillo. I'm I'm hoping they can get to Vargas early, like everyone's done so far. He's had two disaster starts. Um, guys just kind of teeing off on him, and I'm hoping the Reds can do that, and Castillo can just throw a hundred stress-free pitches. Um, like when he's had good starts, he's thrown 107, 107, and 106 pitches. So if he's pitching well, he's not going to get pulled early. Um, so that's also why I like Castillo at that price. It's just way too cheap. Uh, but Duvall and Suarez, once again, two of my favorite bats. Uh, my two favorite bats in this game, for sure. Yeah. And at their respective positions, I think that they're both awesome plays. I'm with you there, man. Uh, and I've said this, I feel like, a couple times recently, but if you need a catcher on FanDuel or on DraftKings, 3000 for Mezzarocco as part of a red stack looks pretty nice. Yeah, uh, especially like against it. the lefty. Yep, I think Masarocco has like really raked lefties in his career. Like a, check. aggressively more than you would expect. Pennsylvania guy, I think. If I remember correctly. Let's see, Masarocco. Yeah, he's been. He's got a 114 weighted runs created plus versus lefties in his career, which is pretty good, pretty good for a catcher. Yeah. So he's he, I mean, he's a fine option on DK, especially if you're stacking up some of these reds. Yeah, and minimum salary on FanDuel. So, you know, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm not usually loving uh, catchers in the catcher slash first base spot on, on FanDuel, but uh, when you can get them for minimum salary, you know, it's not like the, the likelihood of him coming out of the game as a pinch hitter is pretty low, so... You should be able to get, you know, the full run of him at a minimum salary. So I'll actually end up with a decent amount of Mezraka. I like it. Um, Mets bats, you know, if you're not playing Castillo, I think that like Conforto and Jay Bruce are are both really nice options. I wouldn't have a ton of the Mets, but I think you can get a few lines um, that look nice on the opposite side of uh, Castillo. Yeah, I mean if. If you're playing a bunch of Castillo, like let's say you're playing 50% Castillo, I would play at least a few Met stacks if you're playing like 100 lineups because when Castillo's bad, he's giving up the long ball. He's giving up tons of hard contact. Uh, I, I mean, I'm not going to play a Met stack because I play one lineup, but I wouldn't, like I would suggest you do it if you're playing a bunch of lineups and you're listening to this. Yeah, for sure. But Conforto and Bruce... Just getting that lefty-righty matchup, top mm-hmm. of the order. On FanDuel, they're both under 3,000. Uh, you take those chances at getting home runs at that price. For sure. All righty. Brewers and Indians. Uh, Brewers, 3.4 run implied total. Indians, 4.6. Uh, 64% chance to win for the Indians. Wade Miley going for Milwaukee. Corey Kluber going for Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland, or yeah, Kluber, most expensive pitcher on the slate, both, state, both sites, and uh, with good reason. He's, you know, one of the best pitchers in baseball. He's got a really nice matchup here. Uh, not a ton to really worry about outside of probably Yelich and Shaw. Um, I'm in for whatever it spits out for me for Kluber. Right now I've got 13% Kluber. Um you know, the chances of him being the highest pitcher or the highest scoring pitcher of the day, he, you know, he's probably got the best odds of that of anyone. Um, 
it's hard to not like Kluber here. No, I, it's it's the price thing for me. Yeah. And I do like Kluber. If I can somehow fit him in my lineup with Castillo and a lot of the bats I like, then, yeah, I would I would love to play Kluber. Um, 13-6 on DK is going to be hard for me to pay for anyone, really. Yeah, that's, that's healthy. Um, yeah, and it's not like the Brewers are some pushover lineup at all. Like, you're going to have to worry about Yelich and Shaw. Kane doesn't strike out that much. Um, you know, like, if Kluber puts up 35 here and you fade him, I think you're still fine on DraftKings. Um, so I'll probably not end up with him. But if you're playing a cash game and you can fit him in with another pitcher you like and a bunch of bats, then Kluber is just, he seems automatic, like, every time he gets on the mound. Uh, I never target bats against him. Not going to do it here. Nope. Um, so, yeah, that, I mean, it's a price thing. I th- if you can fit him in on FanDuel with uh, a double stack that you like, then by all means, he's play some Corey Kluber. He's an easy fit on FanDuel, in my opinion. Oh, okay. There, There's cheap enough stacks. Like, Then, yeah, play some Kluber. Yeah, I mean, it, like it's hard to really give a ton of analysis on a guy that's a you know top five pitcher in baseball. Like, just play him. Of course, play him. He's he's phenomenal. Uh, yeah, he's top, yeah top five is even like he's like a top three or two pitcher. He's yeah, look, he's I, right up there with Scherzer, Sale. Of course. Uh, just like if you ever watch him, if you just want to watch Kluber pitch, he's. He just looks amazing. He never changes his facial expression. Um, the clue bot. That's why they call him the clue bot. He's, he's got the fourth most wins above replacement in the last three years. Um, you know, top five in XFIP over that time. He's just, he's nasty, man. He's just got a, over the last three years, 1.89 walks per nine. Just doesn't put people on. Yeah. What's crazier is that Kershaw's is 1.38. <laughs> Some good pitching out there, man. Yeah. Uh, Indians, I'll have a little bit of an Indian stack. Uh, 4.6 run implied total is pretty nice. I'm not super terrified of Wade Miley. So guys like Lindor, uh, Jose Ramirez in particular looks really nice today. Uh, I like Edwin Encarnacion. Um I'll have a little bit of Indians. I don't expect them to be terribly popular, so I'm hoping I could be just a, a skosh above the field. Yeah, I, I like the Indians a ton. Um, Ooh, okay. Yeah, so, you know, decent run total. I don't think they're going to be overly chalky. Um, Jose Ramirez, like you said, he's one of my favorite plays. Third base is deep, though. So $4,900 for Ramirez. You got Nolan Arenado against the lefty in Coors. So that's going to be very popular. I don't think Ramirez is going to be that popular. Same with Lindor. He's expensive. Love him, though. Uh, Miley had 12 batted ball attempt uh, events in his first start against righties. And right now he's leading the league in average exit velocity at 95 miles per hour uh, against righties. So obviously small sample. But if you just look at the quality of contact he gave up, he got crushed. Like... He had a 67 mile an hour average exit velocity, or 67 mile an hour exit velocity, and then uh, 82, and then everything else was 95 plus pretty much. So he got clubbed, and that was against the Reds. And these Indians are much, much better. I like Jan Gomes and Edwin Encarnacion. Um, Even Michael Brantley, lefty lefty, I don't mind in a stack. Uh, So Indians actually one of my favorite stacks of the day. Nice. Okay. I don't have a ton of them, but, uh, uh, like, I could get there with the right sort of machinations of line movements and lineup changes. Oh, yeah. uh, I have no problems with them. I'd say that Jose Ramirez looks like the best play on the board for them. Um, the green door is just very expensive, but, you know, it's shortstop, so you're getting a different kind of uh, production from Lindor than you do from most shortstops. Uh, I, those, are, those would be the two guys that I would want the most of. Yeah, I completely agree. Those are my two favorites. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say much else. Uh, Feel free to roster Kluber. I don't think it's a bad idea. Indians should be relatively low owned from a stack, I would imagine. Yeah. So, uh, nice looking option there. 
Rangers and Tigers. Uh, this one's a big one for me. Rangers 5.3 run implied total. Tigers 4.2. It's a 61% uh, chance to win for the Rangers. Mike Miner going for Texas. Mike Fires going for Detroit. I like Miner a little bit here. I'm really surprised to say that, uh, given that he has a 4.62 expected FIP from Steamer. But uh, I'll have a, a very tiny bit of Miner. I've got... You know, probably in like the 8% range when all is said and done. I just really like <clears throat> the matchup. And more importantly, uh, I'm over the moon for a Rangers stack today. Yeah, no no issue with the Rangers stack. Fly ball, Mike fires, um, 90 degrees. Like, it's, it's not going to go well for him, I don't think. So I could see Gallo and Mazzara and Chu... Either any of those guys taking him deep here. Um, I don't really like playing Delano to Shields. Jerks and Profar is cheap on DraftKings. Um, so I like that middle of the order for the Rangers for sure. Do you like one through eight or where are you at here? Uh, I'd happily go one to nine. Okay. On um, on FanDuel, I, my main focus would be one to five. Uh, Chu is a spotlight hitter. Uh, love Mazzara, love Gallo, um, love Profar. So like two, three, four, five is just an exceptional stack. Um, I like Ronald Guzman if I need him. Uh, I'll, I'll go really any direction here. Any sort of combination of Rangers is in play for me. Yeah, I mean, and that's just looking at some of the price prices on FanDuel that you got pulled up there. That's one of those stacks that can help fit in a Kluber or... Yeah. Um, even an Aaron Nola with a more expensive stack. Uh, so certainly get the Rangers. Uh, it's great hitting weather, probably the best on the slate. Looks like some wind's blowing in, but if I remember correctly, I don't think wind has that big of, a, of an effect in Arlington. Uh, so I'll have to check on that, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. It's 90 degrees. Um, Mike Miner, like he was good to me last start. On that short slate, I don't think I'm going back to him here. Nine righties, probably. Uh, unless Leonis Martin leads off, then he's going to get eight righties. Um, so I don't think it's the slate for me for Miner. Um, I'd maybe play Castellanos against him, but I also don't want to target against him very heavily. Yeah, Castellanos is the guy that I would be looking at if I were going up against um, Miner. He grades out really nicely, hitting third. Uh, the Tigers implied total is fine. I think I'm just going to have a little bit of minor just as a flyer because of the likelihood of a victory. And uh, the Rangers stack will be one of my two most popular stacks of the day. They're very much one of the stacks that are in spotlight stacks today. Yeah, I understand that. Um, a huge run total yeah. against Mike Fires. It, it all lines up here. They should be... I would think decently chalky it may be more on DraftKings because they might help you fit in some Coors bats which everyone's going to want to get to or people usually want to get to um but I'm, I'm not really worried about them being like 25 30 percent so yeah they'll be really popular on FanDuel because of that pricing like Profar at 2500 Chu, Mazzara, Gallo all 3500 or less mm. um it's just hard to avoid that kind of that price discount for sure. All righty. Cubs and Marlins. Uh, this one's going to be weird. So Cubs, no total right now. I have it entered as about eight and a half. Let's just double check to make sure that it's not out yet before I start rambling and then figure out that it is. There's still not a line out yet on this game from a technical standpoint. So this is made up as well. Yeah, we, we've got nothing here. The That's assumption yeah. is that Jen Ho Seng is pitching for the Cubs, Jose Urena going for the Marlins. Uh, Seng not available on FanDuel. Uh, I think he's worth a little bit of a look on DraftKings if he is going, only priced at 4300 But for right now, uh, there's a lot up in the air in this game, like whether or not Seng even is the pitcher. So keep an eye on that. Uh, if he is, he's worth a look. Um, if this total is somewhere in like the eight to eight and a half range, then I really like the Cubs again. 
Uh, I like the Cubs yesterday. They were relatively low owned and they went uh, hammer time. So I'm going to go back to the well with Cubbies again today. Uh, I like the lefty Cubs specifically. So Rizzo and Schwarber. If Ian Happ is hitting up in the lineup, that would be nice too. But I, I don't see him even in the lineup. Uh, Zobris is fine if he leads off. Um, Did you see Happ's game yesterday? Yeah, man. And I, man, I, I had the national stack. I was gonna go like a, I had a five man national stack, and I was gonna go like three two with some Cubs, and I was looking at Happ and didn't end up on him. If I would have played him over Michael Taylor, I would have had uh, some commas in my winnings, but uh, <laughs> so that would have been nice, but didn't pull the trigger on Hap. I did like him, though. Uh, so I hope some of you guys did. Anyways, I had a decent amount of Hap. Did you? I did. Nice. He, he couldn't have been owned, right? He was batting eighth. Uh, he was like 4% or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so that's nice. Um, 4% double dong is always, always a nice thing to have. He got um, up again with two guys on in the bottom of the eighth and I was like oh shit <laughs> <laughs> yeah at that point he you're just being out. greedy though asking for another another home run on an eight hitter oh yeah for sure everybody just kept hitting like I was just like yeah. okay well you know who knows how this is going to shake out and the guys <laughs> that were getting out were like Caratini guys that I didn't really have I was like yeah keep yeah. popping out man I don't, give, I don't care about you at all uh, yeah I love the Cubs today I'm not I don't love them really as a stack. I don't necessarily want to target against Urena with righties as much. I mean, Chris Bryant is not your normal righty. He can crush righties, and so can Wilson Contreras. I think they're just a little bit too expensive for me on DK. Sure. They'll probably be low-owned for going against what we think is an average pitcher. So, like, you're probably going to have a lot more exposure to them than I will because mine will probably be zero. Um, unless I end up with a Rizzo or Schwarber. Gotcha. So, I don't know. I mean, I think it's a pretty good spot for them, but there are spots I'm looking at uh, over them. Yeah, it's more of a price thing for me on FanDuel than anything else. Like, Zobrist is only 2600 projected to lead off. Bryant only 4200 That's $1,000 cheaper than DK. Uh, Rizzo just gets the benefit of the lefty-righty. Wilson Contreras is only 2,600 hitting cleanup in a lineup projected to score 5.2 runs. Like, I don't care that he's a catcher. I just, it's hard to get away from that for me. And then Schwarber, 3,700, $1,100 cheaper than he is on DraftKings. Again, lefty righty matchup. Uh, it just works out from a price point for the Cubs. Like, you can go Cubs, Rangers, and Kluber pretty easily, I believe. Cubs, yeah, you could probably do that just eyeballing some of those prices. Yeah. Uh, because you get, you know, you get uh, you get Profar at like twenty five hundred or whatever it was, and that covers you at shortstop with a bargain price. Yeah. Um, you know, third base isn't really big for the Rangers if uh, without Beltre, so um, you can get to that pretty easily, I think. Uh, for sure. So I'll end up with a decent amount of Cubbies. Alrighty, White Sox and Pirates. White Sox, 4.2 run implied total. Pirates, 4.8. 57% chance to win for the Pirates. Luke Giolito going for Chicago. Ivan Nova going for Pittsburgh. Uh, not looking at Nova at all. Um, I can't imagine wanting to use Giolito, but he's the minimum salary on DK. So uh, just this isn't a game for pitching for me. I, I would... I would be looking elsewhere. Are you looking at Giolito at all? I I don't know like I don't know why he's priced so low. He had a good start against the Cardinals and it wasn't just the results. He he did make some guys miss, which he hadn't been doing pretty much all year in his first five starts. He made some guys chase. Um so I don't know what to do with Giolito just in general. That was a good start, uh, encouraging start from him. Um, just showing signs of life, really. Um, but, like, he's 4K, big run total for the Pirates. I don't like targeting against the Pirates. With righties, you get all those lefties to start off. Um, so I think I'm going to wait it out on Giolito. Not going to play him here. Do you think he'll have ownership on DK just because he's no. so, so cheap? No. You don't think so? He's got a walk rate 
higher than his K rate right now. Right. His his I walks don't... per nine is six point five. Yeah, I mean he he was really really awful um, the first five starts, and then the last one he I I'm gonna look at like his pitch mix mix and stuff as the day goes on and see like if he was throwing a certain pitch more times or how he was getting his swings and misses because it doesn't really make sense based on what he's done to start the season. Still gave um, up two dongs in that most recent game though. And those were late though. Like he was cruising. I stacked the Cardinals against him. I remember I was like, Oh, this guy's just awful. Um, and then I looked at the score and it was like six innings and no earned. It's like, oh, that's great. Just getting crushed by Lucas Giolito. But so I don't know, maybe he's figured something out. He was a big prospect coming up, right? Yeah, uh, huge. He was Keith Law, Keith Law's number one prospect at one point. Um, I assume that he was number one uh, elsewhere. Yeah, I mean, maybe sometimes it takes a while with these guys. I'm not saying that that start was a turning point for him, but it could be the start of something. So I, I'm guessing people are going to talk themselves into a little bit of Giolito on DK. Um, I can't go 100% on him, so I don't think I can play him. But. He's supposed to have a big-time curveball, and that has just not been the case in the majors. It, his curve has gotten absolutely shellacked. So, that's yeah, weird. It's, uh, sometimes it breaks wrong. Yeah. So, he's just a, a project for, let's say, the rest of this month. I'll be monitoring him pretty closely if he can put together a couple nice starts. I think he'll be a project for the White Sox as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I like a little bit of a Pirates stack, um, particularly on DraftKings. Uh, they popped up. I want. I think it was DraftKings. Let me make sure I'm right here. Yeah, they're they're cheap. Um. No, nah, I think it was more FanDuel. No, nah, it was definitely DraftKings. I'm an asshole. Yeah. Uh, you know, Frazier, Polanco, Josh Bell. Corey Dickerson, that one through five looks nice. You know, if you want to bring Marte along for the ride, that's fine. Um, it's just, you know, Giolito has not been good. So you at least have to look at the Pirates a little bit. 4.8 run implied total in a road game. Um, I'll have a very small amount of the Pirates. I don't expect them to be terribly highly owned, but they got to be worth a look. Yeah, for sure. Big run total. Um, if you're going... Like, five out of six of Giolito's starts have not been great. And um, so, I mean, you could target these Pirates for sure. I'm not saying that Giolito's some new pitcher now. He could certainly go back to being awful. And the lefties, he's not getting any whiffs against lefties on any of his pitches. Um, so Bell, Dickerson, Frazier, and Polanco make for a pretty cheap stack on DK. I think that makes sense. Uh, so, yeah. A little bit interested in the pirate stack. There you go. Good to move on. Yep. All right, let's talk Coors Field. Rockies and Angels. Ooh. Rockies five point four run implied total. Angels five point one. Fifty three percent chance to win for the Rockies. John Gray going for Colorado. Andrew Heaney going for the Angels. Uh, I assume we're not looking at any pitching here this game is all about hitting at which point i love the rockies yeah i mean you should i think uh, um so heaney's been really good actually like i like what i'm seeing out of heaney the whiffs are up um good strikeout rate all that stuff he can definitely miss bats but he's throwing a sinker and a curve uh mainly um, and then a changeup as well, and those aren't those just aren't going to move well in Coors, um, especially that curveball. So I think he could get rocked here. Um, Arenado, Lemayhu, uh, Iannetta, Desmond. There's some good righties here. You haven't even mentioned my spotlight hitter. Story. Yeah. Yeah. He was next on my. He was on the tip of my tongue. Thirty-eight hundred uh, on Fangio <clears throat> tonight. Yeah, that's just too cheap. Yep. Him against the lefty in Coors is he's always going to be chalk, but he doesn't strike out as much against lefties and when he hits when he hits it, he hits it really hard. And that usually means good things in Coors. Yeah, he's going to be like <clears throat> ridiculously chalky. 
getting, you know, like you said, clean up in cores versus a lefty. He's checking off all of those boxes, but 3,800 for a shortstop or even 43 on DK. Yeah. It's preposterous pricing for a cores game for story in particular, like Arenado's 5,100 Blackman 4,800. Those guys are priced like they're playing in course tonight. Whereas story is like, it's like they forgot to check the box next to his name or something. Cause he should be like 4,500 in course as a shortstop. Right. Yeah. I mean, he, he should be 5k against a lefty every time on DK. I, so I don't know. DK's blowing it with story. He's going to be pretty chalky. So that's why I like Lindor. You're paying up a bunch more, but um, like I think he could match him or exceed him in points tonight pretty easily. Yeah. Um, so I probably won't end up on story unless I end up on a full Rocky stack. Um, but he's an awesome play at that price. Yeah, my only concern, like his stat line against lefties is incredible. A 380 on base percentage compared to a 297. Uh, for righties, 613 slugging against lefties compared to 452. He's got a 326 ISO. Uh, he does strike out more versus lefties than he does against righties, though, oddly enough. Which This year? Uh, career. Really? 34% K rate versus lefties, 32% K rate versus righties. Oh. Not something I, I would have expected. I thought it was the other way around. So, um, yeah, I was just dead wrong on that. Interesting. Yeah, but apparently when he doesn't strike out, he's putting the ball in the seats. Yeah, that, that is very true. Yeah, so very much uh, a, a three true outcomes guy. Yeah. Let's see. Home runs per plate appearance. Where's that at? Is that not on here? Apparently not. Well, never mind. <laughs> Either way, uh, Ooh, oh, there it is. That's well. This is sort of what I wanted. Fifty-two percent hard contact rate in his career versus lefties. Yeah, that's. If he hits the ball, uh, ball go very far. That is true. Um, <clears throat> you like any angels against John Gray? I do. Or actually. which angels? Which angels? I, I should uh, say. Kinsler, Trout, and Upton are the guys that are grading out the most for me. Um, that's basically it i have a small amount of ownership for those three guys kinsler in particular leading off 5.1 run implied total um second base only 3300 on Fanduel. Uh, he'd be a guy that i would have to fill in at at a second base spot um trout i just whew, that's, it's tough to pay that <laughs> yeah especially against a good pitcher like john gray and you've seen john gray play really well in coors um, not even irregularly. So, I mean, you can make a case for really all of these angels, but I want to focus on the lefties. You don't have Otani or Valbuena in your lineup, right? I do not. I don't. I don't know why that would be the case. Neither do uh, I. So I'm just going to assume those guys are in, and that both of our lineups are wrong because I have the same thing. Um, and I like the lefties against Gray. He's really awesome against righties the angels don't strike out against righties though so you can make a case um for the whole angel stack but i really want to focus on otani and valbuena and then of course mike trout if you could fit him in for 6300 i don't know how you're going to do that um <laughs> sang and giolito combined are only two thousand dollars more than trout <laughs> yeah like he's very expensive so you can fit him in if you can. I mean, you can with certain pitching and um, value bats, but that's super expensive for not even having the platoon advantage. Yeah, um, it's mostly just Kinsler for me. I don't. I mean, Upton at four thousand, I think, is a pretty nice price in cores. It's going to be really hard to get the Trout. I'm anxious to see what his ownership is. Um, it's a really unique scenario. You don't see salaries that high all that often. Yeah. I That'll probably be the highest a player will be all year on DK, right? Yeah, I think the only way that it would, like, can you imagine if he was facing a lefty? <laughs> 7K. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it's just uh, a big-time Rocky stack. 
Um, if LeMahieu is in the lineup, he grades out really, really nicely for me at 3,300, uh, particularly if he's hitting uh, leadoff. He claims he's fine. We'll see if uh, the Rockies agree. Yeah, just um, I mean, he's 4,400 on DK. I think DK just blew the pricing here um, all over the place. All over the place besides Trout. Um, yeah, they got they got Trout right. Yeah, like Arenado against the lefty should be six K then if Trout's going to be sixty three hundred. Yeah, and it's so. hard to not like the Rockies here. Yeah, and they're going to be probably the most popular stack. So. Yep. A's and Astros. A's three point nine run implied total. Astros four point two. Uh, 55% chance to win for the Astros. Lance McCullers going for Houston. Uh, Sean Manaya going for Oakland. Um, I guess I'm looking at McCullers a little bit on FanDuel, but I'm, I don't really like the pitching in this game, which is weird to me considering they have a very low implied total for both teams. What are you looking at here? Because this game just has me sort of confused. Yeah, this is kind of another one I want just to stay quiet and both pitchers pitch okay, but don't do anything too special. Um, I, I have some interest in McCullers. The A's are like an average matchup against righties. Um, if we see like Pinder and Kana and uh, Matt Chapman in this lineup, and I mean Chapman's probably going to be in it, but like even Matt Joyce leading off, all these guys strike out. And McCullers has really nasty stuff when he's got it working. And um, it's a pretty good park. The A's aren't the greatest matchup, but I, I mean, I think McCullers can dominate them like more times than not here. Um, and he's a $2,300 discount off of Kluber. So that's my interest in McCullers. I like him over um, Paxton in that same price range. Okay. Um, if he fits in my lineup, then yeah, I'd love to have him, but I'm not forcing him in. And then Manaya going up against the Astros, like he just dominated them, but I think they're just a lot better matchups. Um, and he's not invincible, as no. we saw last game with the Mariners. And the Astros aren't really going to strike out against lefties that much. Now I'll have a, a a couple lines of Astros just because. Springer, Altuve, Correa, Gurriel, Bregman uh, going ready, 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 ready against the lefty is, is tough to ignore. Their price isn't bad on FanDuel as well, so it, or DK for that matter. Um, so you can get there, but the 4.2 run implied total is what's keeping these guys down. Uh, I expect more out of the pitching matchup, and I think the pitching is overpriced for the game. For sure. So it's hard for me to really get to anything. On my first 150 lines, I didn't get any McCullers. I, I mean, it's surprising. Yeah, I don't think it's terrible if you don't have him. I don't think he's going to break the slate or anything, but. He could. I mean, yeah, he could. He's got that kind of stuff. When, um, so there's a bunch of pitchers like that, though. Paxton could do it. Um, yeah. And you know, like, I mean, Kluber, Severino, Paxton, McCullers, Nola. Bundy could do it. Yeah, Godley could do it. Castillo could get you 30 here. I wouldn't even. Like, there's just. So many outcomes yeah. that could happen that um, you got to kind of consider all these pitchers, and who knows? I'm with you. Um, yeah, this is just, it's not a game I'm going to have a ton of. And I'm surprised. If you just looked at this and didn't look at the rest of the slate, you would think the Astros were in a pretty decent spot just because of the lefty righty stuff. Mm -hmm. Relatively disc. Like, Guriel's price on FanDuel is $2,800. Uh, that's pretty low. Um, but, you know, it's just they're not a team that I'm getting to with all that sort of regularity. I hope this game stays quiet. Now, part of this next game, I want to be very loud. Uh, Dodgers and D-backs. Dodgers, 3.7 run implied total. Diamondbacks, 3.4. It's a 53% chance to win for the Dodgers. Uh, Rich Hill going for L.A. Zach Godley going for Arizona. Um... Screw your boy Godley. Give me some Rich Hill tonight. I am not on Rich Hill. Um, I'm on Rich he, Mountain. That's how much I like him tonight. Yeah, he just doesn't have 
like he's never really had that long of a leash, which scares me. It is a good price for him, I think. Um, isn't he coming back from the DL? Yes. Yeah, that scares me as well. Um, so I was just making sure he was starting because last night when I checked, there was some confusion about who was going because he was supposed to start Sunday and then he was supposed to start tonight. Um, so I guess he is going to start tonight then for sure, right? He's confirmed. Uh, I mean, I think he's the starter. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, it's if, if the Vegas injury? one... Oh, God. So, so is that Bill another blister? Bill was expected to be activated for the Mexico Series finale after missing two weeks with a left middle finger issue. First a split nail, then an infection. Yeah. Um, weird. The Dodgers were concerned that the humidity would put his finger at further risk. There's a sentence I've never spoken before. <laughs> I, I never I think to know. myself, wow, it's humid out. I hope this cracked nail on my finger doesn't get weird because of the humidity. <laughs> yeah. Um... So, I don't know. I'm, I'm not playing Hill here. I get it. But coming off the DL, he he just gets pulled at like 80 pitches all the time by Dave Roberts. And I just can't have that on a slate like this tonight. Um, so, I think his upside is pretty capped, even at that price. I'd much rather go with Godley for 8200 I just love his stuff. The Dodgers are not a very impatient team, which does scare me a little bit for Godley. Um, but I just love the talent and the price for him. It's a good park. He can certainly make some of these guys miss, like Jack Peterson and Max Muncie, Matt Kemp from the right side, Chris Taylor. There are some strikeouts in this lineup for Godley. Um, Rich Hill, seven runs in five innings against the Dodgers in his last start before he went on the DL. Uh, not the best game in the world, but... 3.4 yeah. run implied total for the Diamondbacks. The Dodgers have the 21st ranked bullpen in XFIP. So I can only assume that we're expecting Rich Hill to have like the best part of this game. If we're not expecting like if the Dodgers bullpen is in any great shakes and they're only expecting 3.4 runs out of the Diamondbacks, I have to assume that Rich Hill is the reason that that happens. So that's that's my lean. Uh, I'm going to end up with a ton of Rich Hill. I will absolutely be over the field on him. Um, I hope that he can uh, do a little bit better than five innings, seven runs, two dongs. Uh, need it to go a little bit better than that. But Rich Hill is my dude tonight. Hopefully that middle finger feels good. I'm hope hoping there's some dry air in uh, Los Angeles tonight so we don't have to worry about whatever the hell they'd be worrying about. <laughs> <laughs> Humidity, mid-60s, so uh, I think that's good middle finger weather for L.A. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds like good middle finger I'm weather, shit for sure. Uh, I don't want any bats in this game, though. Do you? Um, A contrarian I mean Gold Diamondback stack? No, I mean Goldschmidt. So yeah. he's 4,400 just on DK. That's too cheap for him. Against the lefty and... Vandal? What is he? 3,400. Yeah, I so that's ludicrous. whatever. Yeah, he's the one bat I like in this game. Outside of that, it's I do like Godly, so no Dodgers for me, and then no Hill for me either. So maybe we'll have a Godly Hill bet. Um, oh my god! Like Real Muto is more expensive than Paul Goldschmidt today. Yeah, got to get that JT Real Muto leadoff. I actually like Real Muto just in general, but. So do I, but that's not more than I like Paul Goldschmidt against a yeah. lefty. Albert yeah, Pujols, four hundred dollars more expensive than Paul Goldschmidt tonight. P uh, Paul Goldschmidt has a fifty-two percent hard contact against lefties this year. That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean Paul Goldschmidt has lots of good stats versus lefties for every single year. He's yes. What's his career ISO against lefties? It's got to be astronomical. Yeah, 269. It's a guy with 1,000 OPS against lefties, and he's 3,400 tonight. He's slugging 600 for his career against lefties. Not, not bad. What in the world is he priced at 3,400 for? I, I'm going to force DK, him into lineups. DK and FanDuel being DK and FanDuel. That's, that's about... Yeah how it goes 
he's probably... This I want to see. And we're going to take the time to do it. I want to know over the past three years if anybody's been better against lefties. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Uh, splits leaderboard. Yeah, I can. God bless Fangraphs. Yeah, Fangraphs is the GOAT. Versus lefty pitching. All right, for the last three years against left-handed pitching, how good has Goldschmidt been? It's I mean, he's got to be, what, top five, you would guess? Yes. Yeah. He is fifth in weighted runs created plus. Um, one of... Seven guys to have an OPS in the thousands. Yeah, he's just... He, why is he priced so poorly? It's insane. It's absolute I, I, insanity. Yeah, I don't understand that. <clears throat> but uh, can't really expect any less out of these sites. They just miss on guys. A lot of the times you see it, so... Yeah, I'm anxious uh, to see his, his ownership. Because it's not like the Diamondbacks are a particularly good stack, so people are going to have to look to him as a one-off. Right. Which is interesting. I, mean, I think he'll still have pretty decent ownership on a 14-game slate, especially at the higher stake stuff, because that's just too cheap of a price. Yeah. Um, and first base isn't that deep, especially up top. No. Like, you've got Gallo, um, Rizzo, and then, like... There's not that much to like at first base, so I'm guessing Goldschmidt will be actually pretty chalky. Um, Ian Desmond is first base eligible on DraftKings, but there's not that much that I'm seeing, so he'll definitely be chalky. Um, you had, the, I think you had this stuff up. I wanted to see it because Goldschmidt hasn't been good this year, uh, hitting 225 and only a 417 slugging, and his BABIP is. Uh, you know, 324, so it's not as if he's been unlucky from a Babbitt perspective. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking at uh, his expected Woba from Baseball Savant. Woba of 333. I know we're not normally talking Woba, but just for, like, perspective, 333 Woba, 360 expected Woba based on his quality of contact. So he's been hitting the ball pretty hard. It just doesn't appear to be uh, falling the way that you would want. And it's all in the power perspective. His uh, batting average and his expected batting average are, are even, but he's got a 417 slugging, and based on his batted ball profile, uh, it should actually be a 487 slugging. So he's due for a little bit of comeback, unless uh, he's hiding some sort of injury that we don't know about. But I want me some Goldschmidt tonight. Um, I didn't realize how cheap he was gonna like he was until right now. So I like Goldschmidt. I love Rich Hill. That's all I got here. Goldschmidt has hit Rich Hill pretty well. Like just average exit velocity, uh, six events, 101.7 miles per hour average. Oof. So I hope he ups that number. Wait, no, I don't. No, I don't. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I thought. You, well, Goldschmidt can hit two solo dongs, and then you can have um, your Rich Hill points after that. I'll have Goldschmidt in the non-Rich Hill lineups. It's fine. That's all right. That's fair. That's fair. It's not like I'm going to have 45% Rich Hill or something, so... <laughs> yeah. I, I could probably get by with, like, 10 and be good to go. Yeah. Final game, Padres and Nats. Padres, 3.8 run implied total. Nats, 4.2. 55% chance to win for the Nats. Clayton Richard going for San Diego. Jeremy Hellickson going for Washington. I don't want either of these pitchers, and I don't particularly want any of the hitters in a stack. Um, there are some options on the Nats that look pretty good, uh, but they're not like the best overall stack for me. Uh, I assume you don't want any of the pitching? Nope, none of the pitching. Um, none of the hitting, really. Uh, maybe Anthony Rendon for 3700 on DraftKings. Uh, maybe Ryan Zimmerman for under 4 k But Agreed. it is... It's This is an ugly game. Yeah. Um, I'm not playing Trey Turner for 4700 because... A lot of his appeal for me is stolen bases, and Richard is very good at holding runners. So, no Trey Turner for me. Probably not playing Bryce Harper for 5,800 against a lefty. Nope. Um, so, this game is 
pretty ugly for me. Uh, I probably won't have really any exposure. There you go. Uh, I don't have anything for this game. Uh, essentially, no exposure from a hitting perspective, and I don't want the pitchers. With you. All righty. Quick look at my uh, my first crunches. A lot of Rockies, Rangers, and Phillies on the FanDuel side. Um, Rich Hill and Nola, my two main starters. Kluber and Miner coming in after that. Uh, on DraftKings, uh, pitching wise, a lot of Severino, Hill, Jen Ho Sang, but that's going to go down um, once the line comes out. And then uh, a decent amount of Blake Snell. Kluber only 20%, which is interesting to me. Uh, best hitting stacks on DraftKings, preliminary stuff. Rockies, Rangers, uh, Pirates, and Cubs would be the top four. Um, give me two pitchers. Let's check out a line. Let's try... Um, give oh, Castillo and Kluber. See if we can stack up anything with that. Okay, I don't, don't have any, any naturally, but I'm going to uh, just run 20 lines of Castillo and Kluber to see what we okay. get. All right, so I've checked off Castillo. Let's get Kluber. So, like, I'm just trying to think of what a chalky pairing would look like on DK. I think Castillo will be pretty decently owned. Um, I like Castillo Bun- Bundy. I like Castillo Godley. So... All right, so you can do Castillo and Kluber with Pirates and Rockies, uh, Rangers wow. and Orioles, Astros and Philly. Astros and Phillies looks pretty nice. Uh, yeah, but you're not for sure. getting like the best bits of these games. No, I mean I. You can get yeah. there, but it's not really sexy. No, it's not. I mean. You're paying 20k for your two pitchers on DraftKings. It's yeah. not. And you're, you're not getting a lot of down lineup state. guys. Yeah. Uh, if you're not a big fan of Bundy, Rangers and Royals is a decent stack, and you can go one, three, four, five on the Royals with one, two, three, four of the Rangers. Um, you know that's that's not going to be a popular line at all, but I think it grades out pretty nicely. Yeah. Um, I mean, I I like Bundy a ton, so right. I think I'm more likely to pay down for two pitchers and just load up on hitting tonight. Um, that's probably where I'm at right now. It might change by the time we get to the live stream, so tune in if you want to see where I'm at then. Yeah, you can do Castillo and like Severino and get you know the good parts of the Rockies and Rangers stack. Mm. Two, three, four, five. Chew. Pro Far, Mazzara, Gallo. You get LeMay, Hugh, Arenado, Desmond, and Walters. I'd, I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I like it. All right, talk to me about hockey. <clears throat> there is no hockey tonight. There's no Game hockey. 7 tomorrow, so I'll have a lot of free time today. Won't be doing my normal morning, early afternoon hockey stuff. Um, so I'll just be strictly baseball today. There you go. Uh, NBA, two games tonight. Uh, Rockets and Warriors looking to close out the Jazz and Pelicans, respectively. Uh, We'll have projections and slam dunks and stuff for those games out tonight. Take a look at our spotlight hitters, pitchers, and stacks. Uh, Subscribe to the channel. Like us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at awesomeo underscore com. That's it. We've been going too long, people. Best of luck tonight, and we will talk to you again in the morning.